here I am in Warsaw, Poland with Martinka. Special tag along episode for her. We're here seeing her family. Pretty excited about it. Also, my heritage uh, on my mother's side is Jewish, so we're going to be going to Auschwitz so that I can, uh, you know, see what happened to the Jewish people there. Um, a very solemn place. I'm actually kind of have mixed feelings about going there. I know I need to go, but um, it's going to be hard, I think, to to take all that in. So here we're going to go look at this now. Też nikogo nie widzę, ale my podejdziemy, miałby fajną panoramę do ściągnięcia. A to jest... And this is the palace. It was the king's palace. The king of Poland. Yeah. Odbudowano oczywiście po wojnie. Yeah, everything was rebuilt after after the war. They bombed it there? Yes. Oh. Totally. Everything here too was bombed? bombed from the air, ceaselessly shelled, her monuments and buildings destroyed, Warsaw continued her resistance for another fortnight. Although fires were raging in the city, there was no water, no light, food supplies had long ago run out. But at length it was obvious even to the stubborn and courageous defenders of Warsaw that further resistance was hopeless. These very brick roads are the roads that the Nazi invaders walked down as they came to conquer this place the same exact stones and so the Germans finally entered Warsaw and the Polish rebuilt the whole city after it was bombed to the ground by the Russians the Nazis and the Americans and now here it stands again It's crazy to see Europe rebuilt, you know? It's been 70 years now. But it's all back. So, St. Anna's Church, right here, that we're in front of, was built Do you want to go inside? in uh, 1300. Beautiful church, big church. I guess we're going in. Getting ready to walk up all these steps. I'm pretty nervous about it. You see, he's like 37, my father's like almost 60. Uh, I lived a harder life, I think, as far as the booze and the smoking. But I am smoke free as of today, for a day. Here I go. Yeah, for a day. Isn't Auschwitz there? But Auschwitz is a day by itself. Well, I thought maybe we could go. This is going to be a problem, isn't it? I did it. One more flight of steps to the top. Huh. And I'm alive. Woo! Look at it. Going down will be easy. That's so pretty. It's beautiful. So this is where the palace used to be. They used to have a wall around it. This is the palace. This? Yeah. But this wall here, see it? It used to go all the way around. The old city was so small. Look, look at how small it was. Oh. And I am terrified of heights. Well, not terrified, but definitely uncomfortable. So the fact that they got me to the top is pretty incredible. So basically, during the war in 1945, when the liberators were coming, the Polish people wanted to build a tunnel from this church here to get across the Nazi lines. Yeah. And if that's not the truth, it's what I say it is. <laughs> I thought in Poland there'd be people doing the polka and dancing everywhere and drunk out in the streets. 
So far I haven't found that yet, but I will keep looking for the Polish town drunk. Hello, so I'm with my friend Michael here today. Uh, at the Museum of the Uprising, is that what this is called? Uh, the Museum for the Rising. For the Rising, okay. Yes. And tell me, what what about your museum, uh, you know, to the viewers, what well, is special about this place? Well, it is one of the best museums in Poland, I believe the best in Warsaw. Uh -huh. Visited uh, by many people, as you can see here. Yes. Uh, this year, 720,000 visitors, I believe, there were. Really? Almost a million people came through? Well, maybe not almost, but almost a qu uh, three quarters of a million, which is quite a lot, I uh -huh. believe. And so this is important, I mean, not only for the Polish people, mm -hmm. but for people that visit Warsaw to see the plight of your people, how hard they fought against the Nazis, uh, uh, and well, then just the one thing. Uh, the thing is that we do not use the word Nazis. Okay. We just say Germans. Germans, okay. Yes. Okay. It is just historical truth. Right. That's all. And uh, it is... Uh, it, it is important to know this because what happened then it just uh, well it shows it uh, tells you about uh, Warsaw today if you want to understand Warsaw today you cannot do it without knowing about the Warsaw Uprising right well I appreciate your time and I encourage everyone to come to this wonderful museum thank you so much thank you So the Polish people really put forth a valiant effort to take back the city of Warsaw. Of the 1.3 million people that lived here, only a thousand were left after the battle, which is lied to by the Germans, lied to by the Russians, and by many people here in Poland, uh, they feel that they were betrayed by the Allies. Left alone to fight, ultimately lose their city complete total destruction. The American President Roosevelt ultimately decided to give Poland to the Russians in exchange for their cooperation in joining the Allies against Japan at the end of World War II. The Polish people to this day love Americans very much, but they're still kind of upset. Um, you can understand why, because we basically traded their country away for Russia's participation against Japan.
So I'm here uh, at Auschwitz at the uh, entrance to Auschwitz uh, extermination camp. And uh, a very solemn experience. Uh, on a day like today, a winter's day, I can imagine, you know, hundreds of people packed in the, in the cattle cars in the freezing cold brought here. Um, you know, shoved into a line like this, uh, but you know, for a very different reason. And uh, as I stand here and think about this, you know, uh, it's hard for me to believe that with all the technology we have, being able to have these auto lines where we produce mass produced cars, we mass produce phones, computers, this place was. Uh, basically an assembly line for death you know it basically was a slaughterhouse and the Germans killed six million people and it wasn't 500 years ago it wasn't a thousand years ago it was less than a hundred years ago this happened I'm here to see it out of respect for the Jews So here I am going through the gates of Auschwitz extermination camp. I mean, it's crazy, you know. On this cold winter day, I can only imagine how it must have felt to be drug out of your home, packed into cattle cars, and brought into this horrible place. This really was one of the saddest places I've ever been in my life. I could just feel such depression, such evil. <clears throat> and when you see all these people's possessions, and you realize that this belonged to a person who was killed here, thousands and thousands of pairs of shoes, children's shoes. It was truly horrible. Do you see all these people here? Look at all of them. Now I want you to imagine all these people jammed into a cattle car with no windows, no bathrooms, not even a place to sit down. And we're talking children too, babies. Warsaw by train would take over a day to get here. Maybe more, maybe two days. So you're locked in. You've got no air. You've got no windows. You're freezing cold if it's the winter. You're burning hot if it's the summer. Imagine, you know, when people get locked in their cars and they burn to death. There it is. That's how these people were brought in. Truly treated in every bit of the word as animals. Truly horrific. Uh, <coughs> you know, it's a place you never want to come to, but it's a place that you have to come see to remember how evil people can be. And I really, I, I hope, uh, I hope people stop doing th uh, these things to each other. We've been killing each other for a long time, but for people to exterminate uh, six million people. You see these pictures with um, little girls. I mean, I have three daughters with their mothers stripped naked and, and uh, 
the fact that these people could do, could could do I mean how could anyone do that how could anyone kill um, innocent kids like that just um, it's just so evil this place is um, I understand why they have it here for people to remember but you know God I wish I wish it'd be bulldozed um, it's just horrible it's horrible what people can do to each other Okay, so I'm here with Martinka. I'm Shady and she's I'm very Cindy. excited because she's going to see our mother. This is the big surprise. Folks. I haven't seen my mom in two and a half years and she doesn't know that I'm here. And he, well, this is my best friend Dada. How? And she made it all happen. Her mom lured my mom to her house just for a hangout. And we are going there. She just called us and my mom is there. And we are just going there to surprise her. And she has no idea whatsoever. So I'm, I'm shaking. No, so it's it's going to be lots of fun. Here we go. In Poland, the kitchen is where everybody gathers. I mean, it truly is the heart of the house and the community. And whether people are drinking vodka and smoking cigarettes, or talking up the latest gossip on their friends, this is where it all happens. So much smile, so much happiness crammed into one little corner of the house. And always plenty of booze to go around. That's for certain. What what do you think that the, the future will be for your town as a young man who's uh, going to be involved in politics or different things here in your country? What, you know, where do you see Poland going? Hi, I'm John. I'm William here. And when I'm thinking about this city, about the Poland, I I'm sure that we'll still we're all the time improving. Uh, we are much this country is much better than than it was 20 years ago. What else? I hope you will, you will see how they're improving. Uh, we are, uh, our economic system is growing uh, all the time. I, I hope we will, we will be like, like more like East.